Hey folks, welcome to another episode of HP.NET Core from Zero to Overkill. In this episode, we'll continue our integration of Identity Server and we'll take a look at uh, the API, the Group Management API. So this will be a quick episode because this is the part that is, I think, the simplest one of all. So in the previous episode, we took a look at the authentication service and how we integrated Identity Server in it. And in this one, like I mentioned, we will see how to authenticate the API requests using the access token that the authentication service provides the web frontend. And the usual plugs, if these videos are being useful, please considering, consider liking them, uh, sharing so we can get more people in here and leave some feedback so we can improve the videos going forward. And Let's go. So over here, this is really simple. We can take a look at the Git changes. So only two files were changed, the startup and service collection extensions. So let's see, at the startup level, right here, not much. I just added this configured auth. We'll see over here in in the extensions that's over there but we didn't have any authentication at the API level now we have and over here in the pipeline added use authentication to authenticate the requests now taking a look at this so over here we are adding authentication and saying that the type is bearer there's probably some constant, so I should be using it, but yeah, it's better. So it's the, the authorization header that we receive. And it's a JWT or JOT. So we have to configure some stuff. Authority is the authority. The, in this case, our authority is the um, identity server, so authentication service. And this is where it's hosted right now. Yes, it's hard coded. It's terrible. We'll put it in configuration eventually. Right now, it works. Uh, require HTTPS. Yeah, it's false because we are playing playing around, but it should be true. Eventually, remove this. And audience is what this uh, this service expects. So this is the group management service. So it's group management so not much going on so if we were using cookies probably right here is where we would put it if we take a look at the authentication service that uses cookies let's go here in the identity so we don't have it here directly but if we check out what's going on when we use identity the default somewhere is Add authentication, add cookie. So this is the default. Getting back to the API, so we add this configuration and add this here, add this here, and let me check here and uh, nothing more. Okay, so over here at MVC yeah so created this uh, authorization policy builder so we require an authentic authenticated user uh, the, the claim that we require is scope group management so only clients that have access to group management can see this in this case all clients will have access to group management but for instance if we want to have like uh, some paid uh, parts of the service. Imagine the live matches component should have uh, only for paying customers. So they will have to have that scope to access the API. In this case, all of them will have group management, but we can specify it. So we require that in the JWT, there's a scope that's group management. And we add this to the filters in the MVC pipeline because we want all access instead of using the authorize 
uh, attribute in all in all the controllers we can do this and all the controllers will use this authori authorized filter and I think it's it this is should be a quick video that's all the configuration is needed and notice that there isn't anything specific to identity server in this so if we were using Google for authentication or uh, another like Azure AD or Auth0, Amazon, I don't know the name or whatever, as long as the JWT had what we require, in this case a scope group management, so probably Google authentication wouldn't work, but any other configurable thing would work. So identity server, server is really just used in the authentication service to implement this but across the other services in this case the api and as we'll see in the another episode the the web front end it's all generic open id connect all of stuff going on and because identity server implements that for us that's why how it works so this is really nothing specific to identity server and yeah, that's about it for the for this episode. This is probably the quickest episode. Yay. Uh, so yeah, in the next one, we'll take a look at the the uh, back for front end, the back end for front end that uses the access token to invoke this service and passes the bearer token over here. So hope you enjoyed it. And as always, if there are questions let me know on, on all the channels that are available available to you so comments uh, twitter blog stuff and uh, hope to see you in the next one see yous